Okay, can you tell us about the Futurist Party? Sure. Uh, the Futurist Party is an effort by me and some friends of mine in the kind of political business uh, to to try to get a viable political party out of all this energy that's coming out of this this Occupy Wall Street movement. Um, we're we're technophiles. You know, I'm a, I'm a tech geek. Like I'm, I'm a programmer by by training. Um, I've started a couple businesses. Um, I'm not interested in burning down capitalism. I'm not interested in waiting for some perfect political system to come about before I change the system. I'm interested in figuring out how to redesign the system so it works better. And I think that we can do a lot. We can get a lot done on the left in this country by taking control of the terms of the debate. By, by not allowing the adversary to frame us in a certain way, but by controlling our message, um, and by and by understanding that a lot of these problems that have got us right now as a country, as a society, are systems design problems. We don't have to change human nature or change morality or make people somehow better to, to, to do like kind of basic systems design work and make capitalism work better for us. Capitalism is a human system, nothing wrong with it, but it has to serve human needs or be redesigned. Okay, now you say that um, that you want to take the energy from heat from this uh, movement and put it into a political a platform, a political party. What is the platform of the Futurist Party? Uh, well, we have a seven-point manifesto. I want to talk about that. We believe you need to seize the frame. Again, that means not letting your adversaries dictate the terms of the debate. I'll give you an example. Um, if you're for reproductive rights and someone tells you that, uh, that they're pro-life, the correct response, if you're seizing the frame, is, well, me too. Um, I am pro-life and I'm anti-abortion, right? That means that I'm pro-Planned Parenthood because Planned Parenthood does all the things that you should do to make abortions less likely and less common. But if we allow, if we allow, you know, if we call, if we call people like Operation Rescue, if we call them anti-abortion, then by extension we're calling ourselves pro-abortion, which is morally nuts. No one is pro-abortion, including women who have had abortions, like friends of mine who have. So that's what I mean by seizing the frame. We have to have the terms of the debate be such that our argument shines in the best possible light. Uh, human systems for human needs. Markets, businesses, corporations, capital flows, these are human designs and they have to serve us. If not, we got to redesign them. Um, read the maps, follow the numbers. We're data driven, we like science, we like numbers, we like maps. We're not afraid to go where the numbers point us, but we also know the map is not the territory and the numbers only draw a picture of reality. Reality is correct in any case. Uh, culture is politics. Let's align with people on culture so we can swing them on politics. If we want to convince people of something, down in the South, for example, don't send some anti-gun vegetarian with green hair down there to talk to him. Send someone who's working class, who comes from there, who's got a couple of guns in his pickup truck, and who aligns with us on the economic issues so we can swing them on politics. We've made that mistake on the left too often. Um, materialism, not mysticism. We're not mystics. We don't believe in Mother Earth. We don't believe in, like, you know, you know we believe in outcomes and systems. And I think that if, if we take if we take a lot of these kind of questions out of the realm of mysticism, if we take climate change out of the realm of Mother Earth and you know Gaia and this, or we put it in the realm of systems design, mastering the carbon cycle, um, how to make our systems work better, we get a lot farther. Um, think clearly, act, uh, plan carefully, act decisively. That's self-explanatory. Um, on the left, I think we're guilty often of being mad at a lot of things. Um, you know, we're mad at you know with the environment, cor corporatism, capitalism, this that. But we want to get outcomes. If we want to make things happen. We have to shed distractions, focus in on issues, and make things happen, whether it's swinging elections or, or, or what have you. Uh, the NRA is one of the most successful lobbying groups in the history of the planet because they're focused on only one or two issues. And I think, like, that's why I say I think this movement is broad and unfocused, and that's okay. As long as we spin off enough um, movements, enough, enough organizations, enough political parties who can go out, focus on two or three issues at a time and actually get results. And the last thing is evolve. Uh, I think on the left, we need to evolve. We need to understand that times have changed since the 60s. Uh, a lot of the tools and tactics we use in the 60s to make uh, to, to move social change are not going to work or not going to work as well today. Um, same thing for you know the, the way the, the cognitive tools we use to kind of understand what's happening to us. Um, in, in the, in, in the run-up to the Gulf War, for example, Gulf War II, we had a Secretary of Defense who um, 
who didn't trust the CIA because he thought they were a bunch of bleeding heart liberals. Huh? Like, like that alone should tell you that, you know, the cognitive tools, the tools of understanding we used back in the 60s to understand the world don't apply as much today. So we have to evolve. Don't be afraid to change your mind. Don't be afraid to try something different if what you're doing doesn't work. Now you say that um, you, your party wants to take the energy, obviously, from this movement. So you, do, you, do you see yourself as a strong opposition with your party and along with this movement uh, towards, the, towards the Tea Party movement? No, I think, I think one, first of all, I, I'm not willing to frame anything that I do or anything that's being done here in terms of the Tea Party movement. That's another example of like not framing, of not seizing the frame. The Tea Party movement is what it is or was what it was. Um, I think that people who are more or less on this side of the debate, that is people who believe that cops and firefighters should be able to, 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 to advocate for better wages and bargain, bargain collectively, People who believe that self-interest in the form of capital markets has to be controlled and channeled to be useful in society. People who believe that capitalism itself is like fire. It's a great servant but a terrible master. Those people are the majority. The Tea Party, whatever, I mean, we outnumber them. So I, I'm, not, I'm not willing to say we are like the Tea Party, but X, no, this is what it is. And um, you know, I think that me personally, one person can't be a strong opposition to really anything in the political system. You need organizations, you need systems, you need networks. And that's what I'm about here.